The next question is from The Reed Striva. Were there ever times during your personal training career where you struggled with confidence? <laughs> Never. That's a, that's a funny question. I've definitely worked with a lot of trainers uh, who had issues with confidence. They either felt insecure about talking to potential clients on the workout floor. That was a big one. Or they just didn't feel the confidence to train people uh, of a certain caliber. Like, uh, you know, oh, it's, this client I'm getting is a doctor. I don't know how I'm going to train them. Or this person's worked out before. They have an injury or whatever. Okay, so now personally, I've never really personally had an issue with confidence. I probably had the opposite where I thought <laughs> I, I was better than I was. <laughs> Um, I definitely, I could walk up to people, talk to them, whatever. But here's one thing that I always knew about myself. And here's what I communicate to the trainers that worked with me who struggled with this. 99% of the clients that are going to come hire you know way less than you do about right. fitness. Even if, you're brand, even if you're brand new. Even if you're brand new and you don't know a ton, you still know way more than they do. Yeah. And here's the other piece, here's the other side of that is I would always tell my, client, my, my trainers, just stay in your lane. Yeah. Just do the shit that you know. It's already way more than they're doing now, and it's going to benefit them. There's no need for you to go do crazy stability exercises. or. And it's uh, okay to say you don't know something. Then totally. You'll, and you'll find out for them. Totally, like that's, totally. That's actually a great yeah. move yeah. Uh, on your part. Yeah, stay in your lane. Like, okay, I, I, you know, I know how to do you know, rows and presses really well and squats and lunges really well, but I don't know like mobility exercises. I don't know all this correctional yeah. stuff. That's okay. Don't do it. Focus on the stuff you know, they're going to get a ton of value. And then continue, because here's the thing. This is the truth now. The best uh, uh, knowledge you'll get or the, the best learning you'll ever do from personal training is just going to be from experience anyway. Yeah, so, I, I, I wouldn't say that I struggled with confidence, but I definitely put a lot of pressure on myself. And so that was like I knew I was going to deliver uh, to my clients because I cared a lot about doing a good job. And I think that, you know, you can get into that like psychology of I don't really know this that well enough. And so it's, it kind of affects you in, in terms of like, maybe sometimes how you're delivering the information, but uh, like putting that extra pressure helped me get better. Like it helped mm -hmm. me to go research more. It helped me to go learn my craft more and uh, to, to really try to, to, to put that type of pressure on us to, to deliver. I want to deliver to these people. And then it keeps building every time you go and you learn something and, and, and you apply it to your client, you see success, you see results. This, this increases that confidence, but you know, like coming into it, like most trainers, if, if they're smart, they realize they don't know shit yet. Mm -mm, absolutely. I, I wish I had like a really good story to share uh, about myself in regards to this. And, and I'm sure there's had to have been somewhere where I struggle with confidence in something, but with personal training. But I, I really feel like that I, I got these lessons early in life. And, and so this is the blessing of like w what I think I went through as a kid, being a kid who didn't have much, I had crooked teeth. Um, you know, I was skinny, like, so I got, I got the, I got picked on, I got all that stuff really early in my life and it built a lot of character in me early. I, I quickly found out that, uh, the more I fought that, or I tried to pretend or try to be someone different when I was younger, uh, the more, the more stress, the more anxiety, the more, more of a challenge it was in my life. And the more that I just became myself and authentic and who I was and comfortable in my own skin and owned that all my flaws, uh, the more I realized that I was even more accepted. And I think in high school, that has to be like one of the hardest times to do that as a kid when, when kids are probably the toughest. And so when I, when I learned those lessons, then I it just, it carried over into adulthood for me. So when I came into being a personal trainer, I knew I didn't know shit. Like I was 20, I was 20. I was just going through my first national certification. Everybody was older than me. Everybody was more experienced than me. Like I was like, uh, I wanted to learn. I asked lots of questions. I I knew not to bullshit my clients and act like I knew more than I, I knew. If they asked me something, I didn't know the answer. I was very comfortable. Practice saying things like, I don't know. You know, I didn't, I don't know. I don't know that answer, but I tell you what, like I'll look it up or I'll find it. Or my other, the advanced trainer who's been here for three years, he's really smart. I'll ask him and then I'll get back to you. It's amazing how much people will respect that in you. Than if you're somebody who who tries to fake it, like I, I always think of the the analogy. I used to give this analogy to to trainers when I would be coaching uh, my staff on this exact type of question: Is have you ever been to 
a restaurant and you are, uh, you know, you, the server comes over and they go to take your order and they forget your order. They don't come over to the lot. I mean, they are just fucking up things one thing after another, after another. And you, and like, in you know, like an entitled customer, we start to get irritated or we, we don't give them a very good tip and we're pissed off. And then it comes to find out at the end of the night, you find out, oh, it was like, it was her first night. You know, she's just learning. And then, then a little bit of the empathy sets in. And so I would tell my trainers, like, don't be that waiter or waitress that tries to pretend like you've been working there forever and you know the men menu and fake it till you make it. Come right out with it. I always used to respect that waiter or waitress that walked up and says, hey, today's my first day. Like, totally. Right out the gates because all of a sudden I give you all this like- a, yeah, you like, get a lot more leeway. Way more leeway. Yeah. Like Because right away I know it's their first day. They're learning. I know they're probably trying to figure- So as a as a trainer, I, I piece that together early on. And so I wouldn't try and pretend like I knew everything. I came in with the- uh, you know, I, I only know a little bit. I'm excited to teach you the little bit that I do know. I know this, which to Sal's point is a little bit more than probably what they did. So I would teach what I knew. And if they ever asked questions around things that I didn't know, I wasn't afraid to say, I don't know. Yeah, I think, the, I think the two big root causes of this type of, you know, lack of confidence or fear is that I, I, I need to know everything, which you, you're not going to. So be okay with saying, I don't know and not knowing everything. Uh, and be real. And then the second fear is the fear of of people saying no to you. Like, I'm going to go talk to someone on the workout floor about personal training. They're going to say no. Yeah, so what? <laughs> it never bothered me. I, it never it never bothered me. I'd walk right. on the workout floor and, and I'd talk to them. they say, I don't want any personal training. Okay, cool. Pff, next person in. Yeah. It just didn't phase me because I didn't take it personal. It's not a personal thing. They said, no, big fucking deal. Who cares? It's because you're, you're a guy. You've been getting rejection yeah. your whole life. Maybe. We're, we're used to it. <laughs> We've been yeah. getting rejection our whole <laughs> life. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. no big deal. I'm used to being told but no. I have yeah. a, Look, I, I do have a story around this, actually. Uh, when I first became a fitness manager, this was four months into my personal training career. So I'm still 18 years old. I'm still a kid. Now I'm managing trainers in one of the bigger gyms uh, in the area. And I was like, cool. Thank you for this. This is great. So we had personal training. And back then we sold a nutrition program called Apex. I don't know if you guys remember Apex. Um, and uh, my club was number one in personal training and number one in, in Apex. And I knew nothing about Apex. I All I knew was it was nutrition. And I remember my district manager coming down and celebrating with the, the how great we were doing and, wow, you guys are breaking records and everything's going great, Sal. Um, I'd like for you to come teach all the other fitness managers of the area how yeah, you- are like, instead of food, eat this. Yeah, <laughs> how you sold so many Apex programs. And I said, I'd love to. I'd absolutely love to do it. And I said, and he was about to walk out. And I said, hold on a second. His name is Sean. So hold on a second. I said, um, uh, what, I need to learn more about Apex. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, I, I really don't know what it is. And he's like, how are, you, <laughs> how are you selling so many of them? And I said, I'm just honest. I just tell people, hey, you, you, you're going to need help with nutrition. You should do Apex. And then they'd ask me, well, what is Apex? I said, well, I know it's a nutrition program. I don't know much more about it, but you do need help with it. And they would get it. I just, it was honest. Yeah. And it's remarkable how effective you could be when you don't bullshit people. So yeah. there you go.